Our kitchen design is really starting to come to life. From DIYing our island and kitchen cabinetry, building out beautiful boxed windows and installing faux beams, this week we are ready to build the upper cabinetry and install our pretty lighting. Welcome back to episode seven of our kitchen renovation. I know, wild. I think there's gonna be like 10 episodes. <laughs> so we just keep chipping away at transforming what once was a very strange, weird bathroom. Of course, I wanted to change into a kitchen. It just made more sense for the floor plan like that. So we have been chipping away at this for a long time, but we've been making a lot of pretty progress over the last couple of months. On the last episode, we did tackle the box windows, which was purely a decorative design detail. We were gonna lose about 10 inches, almost, actually, we were gonna lose about a foot in the kitchen for me to have this design detail. And I did second guess myself a couple of times, but I feel like creating moments like this in the structure of a room to really have a special moment in design was so worth losing the foot. This just added so much character. Also in the last episode, we DIY'd faux beams, which I feel like brought so much depth and character to the ceiling in this space. So we are ready this week to tackle upper cabinetry. So we're gonna be doing upper cabinets above the refrigerator on the opposite side to really balance the back wall of the kitchen and also over on the side. Something that we are gonna do first <laughs> that I've been dying to do. We are gonna be putting up our pretty pendant lights that go over the island, which we've had since I ordered these on Black Friday. Got a super steal. I think they were around $130 a piece. Lighting can get expensive, so that to me, I was really <laughs> excited about it. They also have glass globes to go here, but something we have to decide first is if we need another extension rod to make these lower. So, Romeo is gonna be so kind to hop up here on the island. So you guys can see too, we're about to decide if we need that foot. So that's, yeah, that's where they're gonna go. And then the globe, let me grab the globe. Okay, so that's without the extension. Okay, now bring it down, the, the extensions. So bring it down from the ceiling, that, this length, it's about a foot. Okay, now bring it all the way up. I think they're too high like that. I think they need the extension. I think it's too high. So I ordered these from a company called New York Lighting and I'll put the link to these lights because they are really pretty. Um, but I requested the extension because I knew, because uh, especially if you have tall ceilings like we do, we have 12 foot ceilings. So I knew I was gonna need some length. So this is actually the second extension. So I ordered a 12 inch and a six inch. So six inches on here already. I feel like swapping the six for the 12 is really what we need here. So the extensions are really easy to add. You just kind of have to take off the, all the top portions and string it on there. Okay, I got the power off so that I can do this so I do not electrocute myself. What I've learned is you don't need this long. This gets in your way. So I cut it just enough to be able to attach it and put it back in there. So all the wires can sit inside the can. We definitely don't need this long. So, so you can have a lot of extensions on this light and make them, you know, if you had like vaulted ceilings or something and needed them really tall. Kind of temporarily installing it. I always like to see if it actually will work before I get everything attached. I need some more of those pretty bulbs. These are Great for lamps, but I need to get in the habit of buying the other ones. I really like the other ones. Let's see if this works. Okay, moment of truth. Ah! I'm getting so good at this! Baby! Wow. Wow! Lights in the kitchen over the island. This is very exciting. They're not too high, are they? No, I think it's good. Once the globe is on it, I think that's good. Okay, we, we took out a six and added a 12. So technically we only added six more inches, but like meeting in the middle was a good thing. <sighs> okay, power off again and then I have to put the other one up and we can do the gloves. Fingers crossed. Yes! Okay.
Definitely need the prettier bulbs. I think I'll be happier with them. So when the AC guys finish running our new AC units, I actually had them leave the vents off. They go on the ceiling because I feel like what gives your home that extra oomph or that elevated look and those little attention to detail things that I like to pay attention to are painting your vents and the rim around your recessed lights. Now I'm gonna paint these the same color as the ceiling and it's just gonna blend in and give it a really nice elevated look. I'm also gonna go back and do that with all of the recessed lights. Not the light itself, obviously, but the rim around it is all white. Painting that the same color as the ceiling throughout your home can really give it the elevated looks. Okay, so my original design and the direction I wanted to take this back wall specifically is to pretty much be filled. It's going to have lots of cabinetry. So obviously this is the refrigerator. It's gonna have cabinet doors on it, so it's gonna look like cabinetry. So up above it, we need to continue the same dimension of cabinet above it. So I'm pretty sure this is where I'm gonna start because it's gonna be the most straightforward. There's gonna be no cabinetry over the window, obviously, so it's just gonna be the window. Then right in the middle is going to be our oven and range and then the range hood. So we're gonna do this in next episode. We're gonna build this. Then no cabinetry here, obviously, for the window. Then there's gonna be cabinetry on this side. So when I designed it, I took into account all of its surroundings. What the cabinets look like below, what the cabinets look like on the opposite side to create symmetry, and then went from there. We're also gonna have upper cabinets on this side. So I chose to make the cabinets go all the way up to the ceiling. And when I say that, we're gonna leave about five inches at the top for the crown molding. But essentially, once that crown molding is on, it's going to look like the cabinets go floor to ceiling. I feel like you see a lot of kitchens like that sometimes, and then you see a lot of kitchens with a space above the cabinets. Not saying either one is right or wrong. I personally just feel like when the cabinets go all the way to the ceilings, it makes the kitchen feel more designer and I think that is more expensive to do it like that because not having to invest in the cabinetry so far up because when you think about it do you utilize that cabinetry you know is it more for storage which I think in our situation it will be more for storage but by going all the way to the ceiling it just gives this grand effect what's been easiest for me in terms of cabinetry projects or any projects where I have to cut a lot of wood is always to figure out my wood cuts what I'm doing before I ever pick up a tool. I feel like once I do that and I got in a habit of doing that, it was I didn't have to overthink it. The projects went a lot faster and I was just I was just able to know I was accomplishing something the correct way. <laughs> so now that I have all my measurements for that portion, I like to draw them out. I draw them out one by one though because you have to take into consideration like the thickness of the blade actually takes away an eighth of an inch. So you don't really want to draw everything out because line to line because then it's not going to be accurate when you end up. So start with the big pieces um, and I try to make like a jigsaw puzzle. I try to make the most of every piece of plywood to keep the budget down and reduce the waste. So if I have pieces that are cut at the same length, I'll cut you know, I'll cut them together kind of thing. So kind of figure that out. After I cut each piece, I like to write on it what it is so I don't have to keep measuring over and over again. I've done that before. I'm like, what part is this? What piece is this? What measurement is that? And then I don't remember what I cut. Writing on them helps. I'm making two cabinets to sit on top of the refrigerator, a smaller one and then a slightly larger one so that I can create some symmetry with the other side of the kitchen. So this one is actually the one that goes right on top of the refrigerator. So we'll call that number two. The major difference between the lower cabinets that we built and the upper cabinets that we're doing now is that the upper cabinets actually have a top. So when we did the cabinets on the bottom, they didn't have a top board because we were gonna put the countertops on top. So we didn't waste the plywood there. We just had like support. So now we have a top. So we actually have the four sides so top, bottom, side, side, and then a back. Once you get the hang of pocket holes, you kind of don't want to use anything else to put together, <laughs> you know, your cabinets or projects. And you want your pocket holes about six inches apart, roughly. These are the best thing on the planet. Buy yourself some 90 degree angle clamps. You can thank me later. So I'm gonna use those <laughs> to make sure that this box is perfectly square. Since our wood is three quarters of an inch, we're using an inch and a quarter pocket hole screw. So it depends, it definitely depends on the thickness of your wood. 
Okay, now we're just gonna nail the back in with my brad nailer and inch nails, which is more than enough. But we don't have any of shelves, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I want shelves. I haven't thought about shelves yet. <laughs> Definitely want a shelf in this one though. I feel like it needs it. Okay, hold on. So when in doubt, guys, call mom. Because <laughs> we're discussing this side of the cabinetry, making sure that I'm doing it the right way. So she's over here on the tripod. Yeah, draw it again with that one actually sitting on the on the on the granite from the soap stone. And then actually block it in. You think I should block it in? Okay. Because I think it would. I think it would add like a dimensional change on that side. The only problem is the is the switch would be in the cabinet, the undercounting switch. But that's it. There's no plug there. If it only operates under counter, that's not a problem. And look how much you would be able to put deep things in there. I was thinking like my pans and stuff. Right. You know, because they could slide in and then that could be just a, have like a cool divider there and slide it in. I think that would be pretty neat actually. Good morning guys. So last night stayed up and determined that I am gonna tweak the cabinetry design a little bit. I have decided to make the cabinet on the far left of the kitchen all the way down to the countertop. I think it's gonna add a lot of dimension and help to balance the refrigerator side, the opposite side of the kitchen, by going all the way down to the ground, so from ceiling to floor. I stayed up last night and made my cut list. It is gonna be the exact same process, but I am making one, two, three, four, five, six cabinets for this side. later it definitely helped having my cut list and knowing exactly it all worked so I really it taking the time to make that plan helped so much so I built all those cabinets in like what do you think like three three hours three hours six cabinets in three hours not bad so since we changed the design direction because I wanted this cabinet to sit on the countertop it's going to cover this switch and this switch powers the under counter lighting that's gonna go like the strip, you know? So my mom and I talked about it and we were like, well, it's really not that big of a deal that the switch for the under counter lighting for this area is in the cabinet. So most of the time you probably leave them on at night and stuff. It's not ideal, but I think it's okay. <laughs> we're making do. So I have to, in this cabinet, I have to cut the hole for the switch and we may have to um, unscrew it here and bring it out. We may have to do some things, finagle it to make it look finished. But overall, I think it will work, you know? After several shims later, just to make it all perfect. You gotta cover them up anyways. My mom said when I was starting this process, she was like, you know there are shims and boards and everything everywhere on my kitchen cabinets. You're just gonna have to do that to make everything like super perfect. So, okay, we're going in with number five. We also ran to the hardware store and got a stud finder because 
I didn't have one here yet. And even though I took pictures of where the studs were before they closed them up, I don't trust, <laughs> I don't trust myself to know it. I just rather double check and know that I'm right on the stud. What's not straight? Is it the wall or the cabinet? We're gonna move on to cabinet number three, which is the bottom of this row. And it's the first one that we're doing that sits 18 inches off the countertops. Uh, so I cut to help us. I remember when we hung our cabinets in our laundry room, it was really hard to just like hold it up and screw and it took a lot out of both of us. So I cut 18 inch blocks so that we could rest the cabinet on it. I I'm thinking that that would help. I don't know. So a design element that I really wanted to do in the kitchen was to have glass cabinet fronts on some of the cabinet doors. Not all of them, but some of them. So I was thinking about which cabinets were going to have glass, and we're gonna be doing all the cabinet doors soon, um, but what, why I wanted them glass is because on the inside, I wanted to have a rich stained wood to bring the rich wood tone into the cabinetry as well, but in a way that didn't fight with the windows or the beams, or, you know, all of that. Just a little hint, you know, so it's not all the same and there's a little bit of interest. So best place to have glass cabinet doors and have it stained inside were the top ones, the very, very top ones. Put lights in there, you know, so they shine down and put something pretty. Because those aren't really accessible and they're so high, they are more decorative. So let's play that up a little bit. I'm gonna stain the inside of the top cabinets before I put them up so it's just easier on me. I'm gonna use the exact same stain combination that we did for the beams and the windows. So it's one layer of gun stock, one layer of gel stain and mahogany, and then another layer of gun stock and then we could seal it as well. I think the problem that I might run into with this is an inconsistent stain. Because this is cabinet ready plywood, plywood's kind of a mix of wood, <laughs> kind of all ground up together, I think. In my head, I'm like, I don't know if this will come out how I want it to. That looks pretty good. You gotta try things. Guys, look how good this looks. It might look like a, just a black hole to you guys, but like, I love the richness. Look at that. That's gonna be so pretty. Since I also wanna do some rich tone here on the side, I'm gonna go ahead, while, I'm, <laughs> while my hands are all stained, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same combination here. And we're gonna do something really special here. I just wanna get it stained. It's still really pretty. So last night I worked on the face frames and also finishing out the sides of the cabinets with quarter inch plywood. 
I worked on it all night until it got really late. I left all my tools here, but that's really the next step because now that we have the boxes in, now it's about finishing them out, right? So the face frames and polishing up the sides and adding those little details. I even got this trim too that I wanna see if I can incorporate like here, like underneath. I'm thinking that might be nice to kind of, so it's not so squared off. So it's really, the next step is really about that. And then obviously we have to prime them and paint the face frames, the exterior, and then the inside will stay the natural wood, unless it has glass, which I'm really excited about the glass doors that are going up there on the top cabinets. And then also when we do this whole other set of cabinetry here, <laughs> I actually want all of that to be glass and it'll all be stained on the inside. So we're literally grabbing some lunch and I'm coming back to continue working on this project. Also starting to DIY our hood range. What? Why do I always say that wrong? Range hood. DIY range hood that we I am building myself because we have a very exciting delivery. I mean, fingers crossed it comes tomorrow. The final piece of our appliance delivery is our range oven. It is coming, it is arrived, it is here, it is coming tomorrow. So it's gonna be a really exciting next episode. You're not gonna wanna miss it. If you've missed any of the episodes in this kitchen renovation or any of the renovation videos in general, I have them all in a playlist down below so that you guys can catch up. And we are continuing on to episode eight. The kitchen's starting to come together. I'm, I'm really, really in love. It's, it's, it's starting to take shape. There's just so many pieces, it takes time, you know? And don't forget, you get even more behind the scenes over on my blog channel. So you guys can check that out too. I'll leave it linked and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. What do you think about Mama's hard work? Are you proud? Huh? You don't know what's going on, huh? Tinsley, you gonna help me paint? No. no.